LT means these are light and fast, and we mean it. Lighter than any other climbing skin in its class, the Splitboard LT offers uncompromised performance at unrivaled weight. How? We use high-performance textiles from other demanding sports applications as a backbone in the construction, resulting in super light climbing skins that exceed the highest expectations in performance and all the features you've come to expect from G3. Thanks to these materials and the minimalist tip and tail, the skins pack down small enough to fit anywhere, needing just a small amount of space in your pack or even in your jacket pocket when you're moving fast. The tip is built with one fixed and one articulating hand to fit any board tip shape. The lightweight tail and camming tail connector are flexible and easy to get securely connected. And the pre-cut straight edge is designed to naturally align with your board out of the box. You only need to trim the shaped edge of the skin to dial in a custom fit. The Splitboard LT comes in two different plushes. The Universal Plush is our nylon material suitable for any location and conditions. It's durable and versatile with awesome grip. The Glide Plush is truly the skin to beat. With the optimal amount of glide and durability, this mohair nylon blend really shines in cold and dry conditions. It's become a fan favorite across all skin models. If you are a splitter looking to lighten and speed up your backcountry kit, look no further than the Splitboard LT climbing skins. Hi, I'm Andy Merriman, Category Director for the Backcountry Ski and Snowboard category here at Black Diamond Equipment. I'm here to walk you through some of the highlights of our updated ski skin line for Fall 20. New for this season, we offer our industry-leading Ascension and Glide Light Mohair Mix skins in five fixed lengths. With pre-assembled tip and tail hardware, these skins are ready to go out of the box. Just choose your length, set your tail clip, and trim your side cut, and you're on the skin track. We've re-engineered the tip and tail hardware to be lighter and stronger, giving you a secure hold to any ski and 11 centimeters of adjustment in the tail. Our trim to length STS and split board versions come with updated tip and tail hardware as well for those users looking for a more customizable option. Black Diamond's hot melt skin glue continues to set the standard and outperforms any other skin glue on the market. We've optimized its performance to give you that ultimate bond, whether you're on a single lap Dawn Patrol or a multi-day hut trip. In addition to our new fixed length and classic STS offerings, we have a full selection of pre-trim skins to our most popular Black Diamond skis. For our Helio Carbon line, we've matched our Glide Light Mohair Mech skins, and for the new Cirque Series skis, we've matched our Ultralight skin with bungee ball tip attachment for the ultimate light and fast setup. Whether you need the grip of our 100% nylon Ascension or the glide of our Mohair Mech Glide Light skins or the light and packable Ultralight, Black Diamond has the skin for you. Check out our complete skin line on our website at blackdiamondequipment.com. Ski mountaineering did not begin as a sport, but as a mean of transportation. It happened in Scandinavia, probably around the 9th century. People used long wooden skis with seal skins attached underneath to move in the hilly and snowy Scandinavian landscape. Ski mountaineering as a sport started probably around 100 years ago and since then kept evolving and growing at a steady pace. 
The first competitions appeared in Italy in the 50s and the sport became very popular from the 90s to this day. Ski mountaineering incorporates strong values, ancient origins, respect for nature and the right mix of endurance and technicality. Full recognition was finally awarded by the Olympic Committee with admission of ski mountaineering to the 2026 Milano Cortina Winter Olympic Games in Italy. Becoming Olympic seems an easy and logical step, but I know how difficult and hard it was to get there. I started ski mountaineering in 1984 and did my first competition in 1985. At that time, the sport was a matter of a few crazy people with zero recognition. I have been involved in ski mountaineering and its governance for many years. First, as international race judge, later as member of the technical commission, and then as general secretary until 2009. It's amazing to witness the inclusion of ski mountaineering in the Olympic Games. It's a great milestone that will allow the social, medial and official recognition that this sport deserves. Pomoka, as the oldest skins brand in the world, has followed this story since its very beginning. Pomoka skins were used already in the first competitions, and the strong relationship between Pomoka and the ski mountaineering races continued and grew until today. The rubber stretcher, invented by Pomoka, allowed, already in the 70s, to take the skins off faster. In the 80s, the waterproof ever-dry treatment, reducing the glopping problems, was a revolution for racers. And in the 2000s, Pomoka launched the first skin specific for racing, the Pomoka Race. At first it was green, then black, and in 2012 it turned into the now iconic pink skin. In the last 20 years, Pomoka Race, Race Pro and Race Pro 2.0 have become icons, winning around 70% of all international medals, including 8 out of 10 world championships. Ski mountaineering legends as Kylian Jornet, Laetitia Roux, Florent Perrier or the Italian team Boscacci Antonioli have trusted and will continue trusting Pomoka for their skiing and their racing. Then, why are the Pomoka skins so appreciated by racers? You may think the answer is easy, because they are the fastest. Well, this is true, but I will tell you a secret. This is not the main reason why so many athletes trust Pomoka. Thanks to the close collaboration with our athletes, we know that what I appreciate the most of our skins is the easy handling. A perfect glue, not too weak, not too strong, and the right rigidity, perfect for fast transitions. That's why they choose Pomoka. And as you can imagine, these technologies spread to the whole Pomoka collection, since we use the same glue and the same membrane technology in every Pomoka skin. How will the skins evolve from now until 2026? What kind of skins can you expect to see in the Winter Olympic Games? We already had a first Olympic experience. Pomoka skins were used in the Youth Olympic Games in Lausanne in 2020, where we won all the available gold medals. We believe that in 2026 our skins will be faster and about 30% lighter than today. And we may be able to introduce some more radical innovations to the product. But allow me to keep this secret for a while in our labs. And I promise you will be the first to know more when the moment comes. In conclusion, 
Ski mountaineering becoming an Olympic sport is a dream come true. Thus, let me thank all the people who made this dream possible. I won't mention names since there are too many, but a big thanks to all members of International Federation, National Federation, race organizers, technical staff, coaches, racers, journalists, manufacturers, shops, and followers. This huge success is your success. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in Milano Cortina for this first Olympic ski mountaineering race. And may the best athlete win. Well, with Pomoka skins, of course. This is the Pellis skin. You can order the skin to be cut for any of the Freebird models. This is 70% mohair and 30% synthetic. So it's a really good combination between having great glide and good grip. So this skin features a really amazing hybrid double layer glue. So this glue works really well in cold temperatures. But at the same time, it's not really sticky to, to your touch. And when you go to pull the skins apart, they're not really a struggle to pull apart from each other. That and they're washable, so you can just basically put a conventional soap on it and clean any of that dirt off, so it really helps extend the life of your skin. So the tip of the skin is a lightweight metal design that's super easy to use, and then the tail is a, a plastic clip that fits seamlessly with the articulated tail of the ski for the Freebirds. And the skin comes as a trim to fit as well. Servus miteinander, my name is Schorsch. Today it's all about skins. So before we start the climb, we need apparently to attach the skins to the ski. I'm gonna show you three different options. The first is, let's call it the classical. The classical option is we separate the skin, take the end hook, attach it to the tail and then fix the skin until the tip and pull the stretcher which is flexible over that's it make sure it's properly tied and just fine so after the classic version i gotta show you another option Let's call it a little more the advanced version. It starts with the same, but then we leave the end hook, take our ski, connect it here, pull it all the way, one move, center it, stretch it over, skin in the middle. Make sure again it's in the middle and the edges are free. Done. A little more faster might be called more the Dynafit style. So version three is, let's call it the race inspired version. It saves time because it comes from race and energy. It looks that way. You take the end hook, attach it to the tail, one move, stretcher over, centered in the middle, ready to go. So arrived on top, we gotta get ready for the down. First step, out of the binding. Second step, skins off. But before, since your binding is still in uphill mode, which means the brake is locked, switch the binding in downhill mode. So keep the stopper down, turn clockwise until the pins point to the toe piece, stopper pops out, nothing can happen. So primarily it's two versions. Either you pull off the skin all the way, and fold it afterwards, or you
you pull it off halfway, fold it, and fold the other half. This version is especially better in windy conditions as you don't have to hassle with a long full length of skin. Especially if you do multiple climbs or how the Americans call it, yo-yoing, you better put your skins as close as possible to the body because they need a certain heat for the glue to be reactivated and putting them in the backpack, they might, especially in cold conditions, they might get frozen. So close to the body. I always put them here next to the chest. One left, one right. And arrived at the bottom, they are kind of fresh and again ready to attach. At home, put them out of the backpack, dry them somewhere where it's warm, not exposed directly to heat, and then have fun for many, many years out in the mountains as much as we do.